Hey everyone, we're just going to give everyone a couple of minutes to join and then we'll kick off shortly. Hey everyone, thanks so much for logging in. We're gonna give everyone a couple minutes to get situated and then we'll kick this right off. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for logging in. We're just gonna give um, everyone a couple more minutes or seconds to, to get situated and then we'll, we'll start in a minute. Thank you guys so much for being here this morning. It's freezing in New York. Hopefully it's warm where everyone else is. <laughs> We're just gonna give everyone a couple more seconds to get in, get comfortable, adjust their Zoom screens. Our panelists look very chipper and lovely this morning. It's probably summer for them. Just a couple more seconds. Well, actually, I'm jealous of our panelists who are all down south. Much warmer weather than uh, the rest of us. Yes, I did get. We did get a little cold front came in. A little cool weather. This, yes, I saw that. My parents live in Florida, and they had the fireplace going over Christmas because it was in the 50s. <laughs> you got to put a sweater on. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I think everyone's in. We'll go ahead and start. Um, welcome everyone and happy new year. So glad you guys have joined us this morning. Uh, my name is Sarah Shelton and I am the market editor at Lux Interiors and Design Magazine. Thank you for being here today on this virtual gathering of Ahead of the Curve to celebrate the opening of winter 2021 market at Atlanta's America Smart and to highlight some exciting design trends that are on the rise. If like me, you are starved for some design news and to gab about all things interiors, then you are in the right place. Uh, with many health and safety practices in effect, Winter Market is open and running, and they'll be kicking it off January 12th through the 19th, and you can register to attend in person at atlantamarket.com. And to kick off the market and to kick off what I'm sure will be an exciting year of design ahead of us, I'm joined by some major players in the design world who have their finger on the pulse of rising trends. In a few minutes, we'll be diving into those trends along with some really great product from just a handful of the 400 plus showrooms at America Smart. Uh, before we introduce the panelists, you'll see your, in your control panel at the bottom, the clever little Q&A feature. So if you have any questions for the panelists, please feel free to drop those in and we'll have some time at the end to get those answered. Uh, there's also a chat feature um, at the bottom of the screen as well. And you can select the chat button and then you'll see another button that says all panelists. So make sure you switch to that, um, the one that says all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your comments. And if you guys wanna jump into the chat and say where you're logging in from, that would be really fun to see who's in from all over the country. Uh, so while in-person things are a little slow coming this, you know, right now, it's great that we can all be together here virtually in the comfort of our own offices and homes. Alrighty, so without further ado, I'll go ahead and jump into our uh, introductory of the, um, of the panelists today. So we have Cheryl Luckett. Hi, Cheryl. Hey. <laughs> uh, Cheryl's based in Charlotte, North Carolina, and she founded her design firm, Dwell by Cheryl Interiors, in 2012 after spending 15 years at a, 14, a Fortune 500 company within the food service industry. The jump into design has proven a successful one. Cheryl's timeless sensibility and style has been featured in a handful of design magazines, and her top-notch design services have been awarded with seven 
Best of House Awards for Design and Customer Satisfaction. Cheryl is named to the Black Interior Design Network's top 20 list and excitedly in 2018 launched her first licensed product with Sylvester Alexander Fine Upholstery. Next up is the oh so fun design duo of Shannon Scott and Raymond Jimenez down in Miami. Shannon and Raymond met as young design students and worked at the same design firm before founding their own, RS3, in 2010. Over the past 10 years, the team has worked on both residential and commercial projects, stateside and abroad. Their sleek, chic aesthetic is led by a simple design ethos. Think different, design different. Their close working relationship with their clients is reflected in the name of their firm. The three stands for the partnership between the two principals and their clients which I think is very clever indeed. And last but not least, we have Caroline Rafferty and her colorful, happy, pattern-rich interiors. Having studied art history and architecture, Caroline opened a boutique real estate development and construction company in New York in 2006, followed by the co-founding of Carolina George, a design firm with its own line of fabrics and furniture. A move to Palm Beach in 2015 led to the founding of Caroline Rafferty Interiors. And in 2019, along with her mother, opened the grand tour at the Royal Poinciana Plaza, where shoppers can find treasures both new and old in a curated space that appeals to all the senses. It is a true must-see in Palm Beach. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I also just want to remind everyone to drop questions um, to our panelists to, that we'll answer at the end. Um, I'm looking at the chat now. We have some people from Richmond, Virginia, Texas, uh, Georgia. So I, I know that we have a lot of awesome, you know, design personalities from across the country. Oh, North Carolina. Awesome. <laughs> All right. And I'm in New York. So we're representing the North. Um, already. Well, I just want to jump in and we're going to start with uh, Cheryl, whose trend is one that I am, and some of my colleagues have been very excited about for, for a while now, the resurgence of brown. Um, and here, Cheryl has put it so eloquently. With gray is slowly exiting stage left, warm, warmer neutrals continue to make a resurgence, avoiding brown as a thing of the past. From furniture to fabrics to paint, this warm and familiar neutral is gaining ground as the new go-to. All right, Cheryl, I'd love to hear your take on the, the cycle of the, this trend. You know, a few decades ago or centuries ago, almost all furniture was brown and wood and then everyone got rid of their brown, beautiful antique wood furniture. Now it is back and, you know, I want to know why is that and, and how is it different this time around? Yeah, so I, I picked this trend because this is something I've been down with since the very beginning. Um, back when it was really in vogue not so long ago to paint every daggum thing, <laughs> I was team brown furniture. Um, and so finally everybody has caught up. <laughs> yes. I, think, I think we have this desire to create really cozy enveloping spaces. Now that could be for a myriad of different reasons, but there's something that uh, wood finishes and just that richness brings that a painted finish or a color, and I love color, just can't. And so it's about that balance. Um, I've always had a propensity to uh, vintage pieces. And I think in the same way that old storied furnishings can lend that warmth and coziness and history, Brown has the ability to do that same thing. No, I love the way we, that what you said about the warmth and how it brings a, a literal warmth warmth to a room. And and wow, I think we all love the hunt for vintage. You know what's so great about this brown trend is that you it's not just about vintage; it's about new things as well. And right. and Cheryl, you did an amazing job of finding this product. And you know, I'll jump into this page. Um, I thought we'd start with just like a classic brown furniture, yeah. you know, little roundup. And this is where I think people, when they hear brown, maybe they default to this you think it's clunky or, yeah. or 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 old school and these I think we can all agree are just stunning and they look you know light and sleek and um 
I was just curious from a modern perspective as a modern designer, like when you're looking for a brown furniture, like what, what kind of pieces or tell or, or, or things would you look for in those pieces? Yeah. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're picking something that's, that's classic and that's going to stand the test of time. Um, I love both of these pieces in particular, this bed, which has this 18th century European kind of feel um, but that's timeless. Like, this this could be a bed from the the 20s the 50s today i love that that it's classic and it's all about you know what you surround it with that brings it up to date you know this could have really fun floral bedding on it or it could have really classic crisp um bedding on it and the context of course shifts the 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 tone of the piece itself but i think picking classic elements um and I think we're seeing that in the finishes. I, mm -hmm. I tend to like wood finishes that are right in the middle, not too light, <laughs> not too dark because right. those it's that middle that really never changes. It stands the test of time. So I, I often steer clients in that direction. Um, but this, that's this caracol bed is, is beautiful to me. <laughs> it really is. And I agree with you. It could, it could live in a, an array of spaces and just by different bedding or the pink color on the wall could really, yep. you know, make it fit the aesthetic that, that you're going for. Um, so while I know we both share this love for brown furniture or brown wood furniture, you know, we do also want to remember that it's not just about, about wood furniture, it's about just brown accents in general. And I grouped these three together of yours, Cheryl, because I thought that they brought about this like different different materials. We have metal, we have a chenille fabric that's so rich, we have this antique mirror. And, you know, if you were to bring warmth to a room, would you would you encourage your your clients to maybe look at these, um, you know, these brown accents that that aren't wood? Yep. So the way we explain it to our clients is it's like a chorus, right? Everybody can't sing soprano, so all the elements in my room can't be the soloist. I gotta have a bass line. I need some tenor, and you know, darker pieces, blacks, browns, they bring that that weightiness to the visual aspects of the space. That could be in wood furnishings, but it all, could also be in um, in metal finishes. It could be in this like like this antique mirror that we we see here. It adds some visual weight so that we don't end up with a top heavy room, you know, a, a room that's not singing a beautiful melody because we don't have all of the players in place. So I love um, I love this idea of mixed metals, which has become super popular. Um, I'm, I'm sitting in my kitchen right now and the champagne bronze uh, knobs and fixtures and lighting, it's really becoming popular, but that to me, that's a brown element. Um, you know, maybe it's not, it doesn't have the depth that we typically think of when we think of browns, but it, it brown runs the gamut, you know, it's like spices. They come in all, all different gradients and, and hues. So um, I, I would encourage clients to, um, to mix in that brown just to add a little bit more depth to the space. Cheryl, you're full of these beautiful analogies and I'm like, like trying to like save for when I have to like a writing assignment do. I love that, a chorus. And yeah, these browns bring like a, a grounding, you know, note to a room that, and going back to your original, the, or the first slide, you know, about warmth and, um, and also these metal pieces also, you know, bring in light in a way because they're reflective and, um, which is, Kind of the fun and the irony of, uh, irony of it. Um, so I, I this next slide, you know, again, our you know preconceived notion of you know brown accents. You think it might be like traditional or fussy, and these I thought felt incredibly worldly and traveled and like they were treasures found abroad. Um, I mean, this is a terracotta lamp from Curry and Company, and this beautiful beaded mirror. Um, I, I know you have like a really timeless aesthetic, but by all means, you're gonna, you're, you, you know, you can bring in a, a more global feeling accent, right? Yeah, so one of the tenets of my business is to make sure that the spaces that we create are a reflection of the people who live there. And that for a lot of people um, means incorporating their culture. 
And so that is something that is extremely important to me. I hear it more often than anything else in terms of request. We want our culture reflected. And so I'm always on the hunt for things that bring in that global aesthetic. Um, you know, maybe it's something that leans a little African or, you know, has an Asian vibe. Um, that's important to me because at the end of the day, I want the, the home to reflect the clients, you know, the people who live there. These two pieces are really great examples of, again, again these are tenor and bass kind of accessories, but mm -hmm. they, they also lend that global feel, um, that texture, visual texture, um, this very bead mirror is just freaking fantastic <laughs> no i want to touch i want this is what i want to yes. like, see in the showroom and see for myself and the scale and like the movement i mean what a find yeah i actually saw this in person at high point market this fall and it had it just it literally kind of jumps off the wall because of that beaded trim um i also love the 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 painted finish on this terracotta lamp. I also like that it's kind of petite. That's something that is not always easy to find that little bitty lamp that adds just a little something special on a bookcase or, you know, on a, on a console or a sofa table. Um, I, but ultimately I love these because they have that weight, that visual weight, but they also lean in, in a direction in terms of a vibe, a more global vibe. No, totally. Yeah, I think that's a fun takeaway. It's not, you know, there's, you know, these this brown trend can be found in, you know, across many, many styles. Um, all right, this next slide, this is probably my favorite product you submitted. I mean, A, I love rugs. Um, I love any selfie. And I think that there's nothing warmer than a, like a warm, or not, nothing more, more comforting than a warm rug underfoot. Um, obviously, like the you know, sisal rugs and jute rugs and woven rugs have been around for a long time and everyone loves them, designers and clients alike. Um, but this I love because it kind of turned the, turned up the notch a little bit on the, on the, you know, on the brown front. And, yeah. I, you know, I feel like maybe, and tell me if you agree with me, like maybe the next push in this brown trend is like really this, like the brown, brown fabrics and these like brown uh, wovens. Mm -hmm. um, curious on your on your take on that. Cause I think when people hear like a brown fabric or a brown textile that might be like, oh, you know, you know that might be too too dark or, you know, what what would you say to that? Yeah, I, I, I've never felt like that. <laughs> You'll see in these next couple of pictures that are coming yeah. up, but um, I like this because it shows the variations. You, you say brown and people think, you know, chocolate. But there really is, there's a lot of variety within that brown spectrum. Um, this, I believe Annie Selke just describes this as um, kind of the colors are spice related. You know, just the nutmegs, cocoa, um, you know, those, those things that we associate with home and warmth uh, played out in this textile. The jute itself, you know, is, is a variation of brown. It adds that texture. Um, I love the geometric. It's a, it's a pattern, but it's not a, what I call a bossy pattern. So this, this rug is not dictating what else I do in the space. Um, so I, yeah, I love this. I love that a bossy pattern. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you want my job? Can you be the editor who writes these <laughs> things? This is great. Um, well, I actually wanted to bring in Caroline really quick. Is that Caroline? I know you have, you know, a classic aesthetic and um, a fan of brown furniture. And I was just curious, you know, what would you say to someone who would maybe shy away at the thought of brown furniture or or a dark brown ground on, on a fabric? Um, well, I, I really loved everything Cheryl said. I was taking notes. I, I mean, <laughs> it's such a beautiful way with words. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I, what I really, um, not, you know, I, when I mentioned brown furniture it was more in relation to, I think you could, there's a lot of value out there that you can find in existing brown furniture pieces that are built really well from 17, 18, 19th century. And you can't build those things again for what you can buy them for. So when it, when it comes to desks, um, sometimes you can find something really special or a secretary or a hutch. My focus was more on the office space, but I, I don't shy around away from brown. I think brown goes with, it's, it, it is such a neutral. It goes with every color and um, you can take it super modern or you can obviously, as we think of brown furniture in the traditional sense, you, you, you know, it invokes a much more classic form. But I think, um, 
most of the modern interiors that I think of as they relate to sort of beach homes, you know, the first thing you think of is like shades of creams and browns and let the ocean sort of be the main event. So it's been relevant in my interiors as well. And I love how Cheryl sort of um, brings out the music of it. I mean, it, it's a really beautiful description. And the, I like bossy texture. Bossy. <laughs> yeah, bossy. I love, I'm going to definitely remember that. Just using the design meaning. No, that's a little bossy. We don't need that. <laughs> that's the that's the terminology we use when we're vetoing stuff. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a nice <laughs> way to, to say it. I love um, Brago, especially as Cheryl mentioned, like the spice tones and uh, are really warm. And I actually wrote that down. I've been looking for something like that. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. we'll send through links afterwards. Um, well, speaking of, you know, you know, going back to the orchestra and, and everything singing, um, Cheryl, we have some interiors of yours. So I asked all the, the panelists to share um, some interior images that related to their trend at hand. So uh, Cheryl sent these over and I couldn't pick one. So I, <laughs> I have both of them up. And I mean, talk about a symphony of color and warmth. And Cheryl, tell us about these spaces you know, what's working, what you're excited to do, just kind of give us an overview of, you know, what, what you did in these incredible rooms. Funny enough, uh, you picked my house. <laughs> these are both, these are both my personal home. Oh, wow. Um, so, so I can certainly speak to okay, good. <laughs> extremely personal. Um, so obviously I don't shy away from brown. I feel like I use it more often than black because it doesn't create that tension sometimes that black can and I know that that leans to me a little bit more modern I tend to be a little bit more traditional so brown is to me kind of like a dial down black like it's not it creates a little bit of friction when it, in the space with other colors but it's not stark it's not a stark contrast mm -hmm. now I love some black too so you'll see on the right in my piano room I've mixed the two um but really a nod again to culture, a reference for my Southern roots with the chintz. Um, but it, the brown just kind of makes it, I don't know, it makes it homey. It's so hard to put into words. Um, but I also love to play with a variety of shades. So the seti there is from my, my collection with Sylvester Alexander. It's a cocoa brown. Um, the, the wall, the fabric hanging is more of a chocolate. You know, the hide rug is really kind of a light, taupey brown. Um, and so to me, it, it's, it, they're harmonizing. <laughs> they're like, they, they all work together. Absolutely. And then in the left, um, in my guest bedroom, I, I love color. So this, this, this space on the right is probably one of the more neutral spaces in my home. I like brown because as Caroline um, referenced, it matches just about everything. It's the color of earth. So, you know, think of flowers sprouting from the ground, like it goes brown, goes with everything. So yes, you can put it with this emerald green, you can put it with pinks and it, it just works. Um, so I like to use it mostly as a foundational color. Mm -hmm. um, I usually tend to pop things with, you know, accents with more colorful colors, but that brown to me anchors everything. Well, these rooms are so stunning and everything you said prior, you know, you know, comes to life in these rooms. They're warm, they're comfortable. These browns are all different shades and tones and they work together so effortlessly and color looks so good on it. And like the pink and like the, the beautiful florals and the, and the art um, and all, all everything you've said is so applicable, which I think is really a great takeaway, you know, just to you know, I hope, I hope the listeners can like, you know, check out their rooms and kind of see where they can like play up the brown or bring in this like easy, easy neutral. So a lot of great takeaways. Um, thank you so much, Cheryl. This has been really, really informative. Um, all right, we're gonna jump into a totally different trend with Shannon and Raymond. Um, I know Cheryl was all about, you know, it kind of coming back in vogue. And this is a trend that's totally coming back in vogue. So I'll, I'll read you the, the awesome quote that you sent us. So we're noticing some of the latest and greatest pieces are trending with an art deco flair and we're loving every second of it. It's not yet mainstream and that's the best part. We definitely see it becoming the new mid-century modern incorporating 
Perlevenir and geometric shapes with a blend of metals. The perfect recipe for bringing back this treasure design style. So yeah. first of all, I love a bold prediction. Watch out mid-century modern. You heard it here first. <laughs> um, but I think this is a decade that everyone loves. I mean, who doesn't fantasize over the decadence of the 20s and the great Gatsby? And, you know, I couldn't help but think of yeah, how, you know, we just kicked off, you know, the, this, this century's 20th century. And I know that 2020 wasn't a great start, but maybe 2021 is like really where it's going to be at with, um, with like this, this fun extravagance. Um, you know, I really had to, you know, dive in and like kind of research, like what are some telltales of this, of this era? And so I just wanted to ask you guys, um, you know, can you tell us some pillars of design for this decade, some, um, some telltale details, shapes or, or motifs? Well, before we get started, can I just give my kudos and I want to tip my half out, hat out to Cheryl for yeah. such a Thanks. beautiful presentation. Thank you. Caroline, you said she has a way with where she certainly does. <laughs> here, here. Yes. <laughs> beautiful. And you have a great aesthetic, by the way. I love your yeah. house. Thanks. Gorgeous. Totally beautiful. Um, so definitely some of the uh, details when it comes to the Art Deco type of style is definitely high-end luxurious materials, whether it's the blacks or dark ebony's, um, uses of different types of metals, such as like brasses and gold details when it comes to like hardware or even the feet of different types of furniture pieces. Um, and then obviously a repeat in design, which you're going to see more in that Gatsby, you know, high-end luxurious feel. So even in wallpapers, you're seeing like these details of repetitive curves or um, different types of little bit of glitz of brasses and even in wallpapers and different textures. Yeah, overall, we feel like Art Deco gives you a sense of elegance, of regalness, of, uh, you know, sophistication where you walk into a space. And if it's truly Art Deco, you, you travel back in time, back into the 20s, where women and men were to the nine, and that's just the, 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 they would just be their everyday attire. Yes. So you get that sense of elegance, very stuffy, but very elegant and sophisticated at the same time. Yeah. So that transpires over to interior design with the overall aesthetic as well. And also they're using a lot of layering aspects. So, you know, to keep, to create depth within this type of style and this design, you're seeing like whether it's pattern on the, you know, on carpets and in, in hospitality or in hotels, in the wallpapers, and then you're seeing them bring out the details even in furniture, as you can see here in that console table, the woven, yeah, the woven detail that you see there, and then you see all those brass elements. So those are these are definitely signs that we're seeing that these pieces are kind of coming back in. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. If I'm jumping ahead of the curve, but one of the a great reference point is the movie The Great Gatsby, like Shannon mentioned. Yeah. With Leonardo DiCaprio, if you take a look at some of the backdrops of that movie, you'll see exactly that Art Deco revival style. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, you guys hit it all in the head, and this was a good, like, you know, you know, Art Deco 101, you know, before we jump into to the product further. Um, I love that, Shannon, you mentioned metals and, and brass, and I thought that, you know, these pieces kind of show, you know, with the little, you know, the brass foot on the Korean company uh, uh, side table, which is actually a, a secret wine cabinet, which is also very 20s appropriate. Um, and then this global views um, piece, which I think just really kind of encapsulates like, you know, the geometric shape idea and idea of the, like the really rich materials. Um, I just was curious, you know, what, how would you use these pieces and, um, you know, how would you kind of guide someone into into dabbling with you know some Art Deco finishes? I think I think obviously it, it obviously it reflects the client that you're working with. So this all new kind of elect you know eclectic. eclectic type of feel is really empowering right now, um, and and it's being driven in a lot of our designs also. So whether we're doing hospitality or we're doing a private home. I think these pieces, even that you see here, like in the foyer element like that, Global Views console table is, you know, is gorgeous, especially since it could be a focal point when you walk into a home um, and then it could have a, you know, a gorgeous complimentary mirror there with a backdrop of some type of wallpaper creating all these different textures. But again, you can see there, it uses those brass details as the hardware running through that console table, which just makes that a beautiful statement piece. 
Um, right. in, in today's residential and even hospitality world, what you're starting to see a lot is a lot of layering. Mm -hmm. So layering these patterns and these shapes and these forms and these materials, one on top of another, already you start to infuse a certain type, a certain type of look. Um, it just so happens that yes, of course, mid-century will forever be mid-century, but it's sort of taking a little left turn into this more regent kind of aesthetic. Which I'm loving because I think we, you and me are both tired of kind of like the art, the, the, the mid-century mid -century feel. Yeah. And I a love it a little bit, you know, we're, we're still, we're, we're moving. It's, it's still evolving, which I love. Now it's, yes. you see it chunkier and bulkier and you see the brulee finishes and the great. And the canings coming back right, and those right, type right. of things. However. Yeah, but however, this art deco feel, I think they're, they're just, they're bringing it up a little bit. Um, and as you can see there, like on that nightstand, like it looks like there's that hardware is almost like a piece of jewelry. Yeah. And I think that's, that's such like a big impact for right. this art deco type of feel that they're using like that high fashion feel, um, you know, that you would see like in these high end luxury in the movies, whatever, it almost looks like a piece of jewelry there is the hardware. And I, and I love that, you know, it just gives a little pop there to that nightstand. Shannon, I, I wrote a note down to calling this like a brooch hardware. Like it totally looks like a, something that, you know, Daisy would wear, you know, in, in, the, in the Gatsby film. Mm -hmm. And I like that you're, I like your mentioning of fashion, you know, like the, like the Global Views console, like it's so structural and we're seeing that in like handbags and, and jewelry. And, um, and I think, you know, to your point of the mid-century, which you're right, Raymond, it's never going to go away. It's just going <laughs> to evolve, which is also really cool to think about, but so, you know, we should, in 10 years, we should look back on this, on this panel and see how this Art Deco trend has evolved because it, 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 it will. Um, and I agree with you, Shannon, that it's the elegance, the sophistication, it just feels chic and sexy and, and, and rich. And who doesn't want, you know, even just one piece in, in a space that's like one of these showstoppers is, um, is, I think would do wonders to a space. So the, this next slide, so these are, are like kind of grand and, and, and eye-catching. And I was really surprised and loved these pieces that you found, which go back to that like geometric uh, form. And, um, but these also feel like really modern. And I think that if people stopped and looked at these, they'd be like, whoa, I, this is kind of Art Deco inspired. But I think that this could look, in, like, look totally seamless in a minimalist space. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that these would play nicely with other pieces. Do you, do you agree or other, other, you know, design references? No, I completely agree. I mean, that's the beauty of design that you can completely overload a room with tons of these vases and mirrors and it'll look great. Or you can go for a more modern minimalistic approach and they would still look stunning. They would speak more standalone pieces. Um, but they, to your point, what I do like about them is that they do have that art deco flair. However, mm -hmm. what makes it so simple are the finishes that they come in. It's just a simple plaster white, black, and a black dark metal frame. So but they also have that very more like linear, right. you know, cleaner feel to them. And I think that that is the beauty of these pieces. And we were actually talking about this, like, you know, we could totally see these in like beautiful home that's got like white moldings, you know, on the walls and paneling. And then all of a sudden you pop in these kind of like irregular mirrors through like a corridor or a space or a foyer space. And, you know, and then match it with a gorgeous chandelier, you know, something that has crystal or whatever it may be. And I think that these could be complemented very nicely. And I do love those those vases. I mean, those, you know, pairing them uh, for your table or coffee table, that would be really beautiful. And they're simple. Yeah, these would definitely be something I think that uh, someone could take from home to home to home and always always find a place for them. And they kind um, of go style, like, like you said, that modern feel, they can go in a modern home or- Mid-century. Mid Transitional, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it's not all about like the gilded, you know, like the Chrysler building, or you know, like we keep referencing Gatsby. It's also these kind of, um, you know, because at the time that was really modern. The, the Art Deco movement was really modern at the time, going away from you know those like heavy traditional European right. um, aesthetics. Um, I know we talked about fashion influence a little bit, but you guys picked these beautiful pieces from Caracol, and I couldn't help but see or think of like a tailored men's suit. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a dapper cane or a lovely like cuff link. And this got me thinking on, you know, how to kind of uh, interpret things uh, from a trend, you know, so it doesn't look like a movie set or a museum, you know, how would you 
you know, kind of tell or like ease a client into this trend, but like, you know, promising them it's not going to look like, you know, like stepping in a time machine back to the gilded era. Is it something as simple as like looking for these tailored finishes on a, on, on some seating? Um, I totally, I, I definitely think a lot of these pieces are being driven by fashion, like you're saying. I mean, you start to look in like a lot of like, like you said, handbags, um, men's suits, uh, even the fabrics and like the pleatings and things like that you're seeing in like female fashion and things like that. On the runway, you're starting to see all these like little elements coming about. Um, to use these type of pieces, I know Ray, we were discussing how we kind of like would use these pieces and how we could tie them into, let's say if you use these in like a formal seating area where you could have like cocktails and there'd be a nice beautiful bar space and you can kind of tie these in with maybe bringing a more simplistic um, type of area rug or paneling or wallpaper. I feel like you could have these, you know, eyes, eye stopping pieces, but it wouldn't overtake the entire space and you wouldn't feel like you're overwhelmed with just kind of these art deco type of feels of furniture. Yeah, uh, my take on it to you, to answer your question is how would, would you per se the client? Um, well, I, I, it's pretty evident that these pieces can go very nicely in a classical, traditional, even transitional setting. Yeah. Um, now, if you have a client that's more on the transitional modern side, and you're going to introduce these pieces, you're going to run into some question marks, right? Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> For sure. right? So, however, we do like to fit, we like, we do like to push the envelope. We do like to push the boundaries, right? Yeah. So we, especially nowadays, we are more into a more eclectic design where we have, let's just say for this example, we have a modern space and we kind of want to bring some eclectic vintage, even pieces to, to the overall aesthetic. These will do great in a modern setting if you pair it up with some modern, low profile, all marble tables. Right. And actually, you warm it up again, you tie it, you bring it back in with some crystal chandeliers. Mm -hmm. um, let's just say you have paneling on the walls. These pieces would look great. So it all depends on, obviously, it all derives from the clientele and what their vision is or what, what their style really is. And now you, it's upon us as designers to say, hey, look, we can go fully classic, transitional, traditional, or do we want to push the envelope a little bit? Yeah. And you know, this is why they hire the pros like you guys, because you guys can take a piece like this and then, you know, mix it with these other pieces and give it to the client and boom, it works. They love it. And, and you've made this really special, unique room. Um, I'm definitely going to, you know, going out into the market this year, going to be keeping my eyes out because I've heard it here first. Art Deco is here and it's going to evolve. And um, I think that, you know, it's something that there's something for everyone in this trend, you know, whether you want to go that smooth plaster geometric route, or you want to go this gilded, sexy, like fancy route, you know, it, it's there. Yes. Um, I'm going to end um, with this beautiful space you guys designed. And I just want to know where this is, what it is. I mean, there's so many fabulous elements um, that I would love for you guys to, to, to walk us through and kind of point out, I guess, for the, for the viewers, you know, how you infuse this space with these, you know, subtle art deco kind of um, uh, elements. So not too many art deco to be quite, not too, too many art deco pieces in here. Um, it was the closest thing that we saw in our personal portfolio that yes. resembled a little art deco infusion, which you can see by the totem vases up in the shelves. Mm -hmm. Those are very cool, very fun. They all, they come in different shapes and sizes, which is kind of cool. Then you have the side table there, which it has the hard iron brass um, legs with so a marble top details, yeah. with the metal details. And then you have the mirror and the, 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 the bronze mirror is. right which is very good it, it is antique it doesn't depict by the picture but it's an antique mirror um so those are the little elements here and there that you can say okay i see a little bit of art deco infusion here yeah this is um actually a building it's um in coral gables it's called uh, modera douglas station two it is a residential building you can um rent condos there. It's uh, developers, Mill Creek developers. They're awesome. We've done a lot of properties with them. It's about 250 unit uh, building. And we were actually lucky enough to do all the common spaces for the entire property. So the gym, the pool deck, the two lobby spaces, all the corridors, unit finishes. Um, took us, what, two, three years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah, too, well, they, they, they are built from ground up, so they take some time to build, but um, yeah, this is just one, this is a part of the lobby space that we did for them. You know, what strikes me, I mean, there's so many, like my eye just wants to go to like all of these beautiful, you know, nooks of this, of this space, but just the range of materials that you all use just feels so luxury or luxurious, which, you know, when I walk into like the lobby of like this um, amazing art deco building in the city, you know, you just see all of these rich materials, marbles, golds, you know, stone. And here, it, I think that, you know, if it were to embody anything from this, you know, art deco, you know, sensibility we're talking about, it's just like the luxury of, of really beautiful materials. Um, and, and, and they're all at the end of the day, like neutrals, but yet all of these, 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 the materials are just so rich. And, um, I think would make, you know, anyone feel great walking through this every day for sure. Yeah. We even included some of Cheryl's Browns in the wood slap. Yeah, we got, we got it. <laughs> we got the memo. <laughs> and this is a great way. It looks so modern, like brown. Is yeah. modern. Yeah. Hey, Sarah, one thing I was thinking as they were sharing these beautiful, um, products is that, you know, I think often we get locked into what our style is right. and we see something like Art Deco and we think, oh, I can't use that. That's, that's not my style. But the beauty is in the mix yeah. too, mm -hmm. often. I, so, so many of those products, I'm like, oh, I'd use that. I mean, I probably would use it in a completely different way, but right. it, that, that's a versatile, a really versatile um, trend there. So don't discount Art Deco if you tend to lean traditional. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a great takeaway. Yeah, I think, you know, all of you would agree and you guys clearly master it in your portfolios is like the master of the mix. You know, you have to borrow from different eras and sensibilities to make these incredible rooms that, you know, are the reason why these people are calling up the phone and asking for your help. Um, awesome. Well, Shannon and Ray, thank you so much. This is really, um, you know, informative. And like I said, I'm going to be hitting the market with you know, this in mind, and I'll have a report back on, on what I'm seeing right. in a couple months. Right. For sure. All righty, Caroline, um, last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about home offices, which, you know, I don't even think it's fair to call this a trend. It's like a lifestyle change for everyone in the world right now. Um, you know, the rise of the home office. So I'm just going to quickly read your quote. Um, uh, as working from home continues to gain popularity, a lot of my clients are looking to convert their spaces into home offices without sacrificing on style. Attractive storage solutions rank high on the request list more than ever before. Flexibility and adaptability, adaptability are key right now, with many pieces serving multiple purposes throughout the home. Um, I feel like this is when everyone is going to bust out their pens and papers because I think, I mean, I'm working in like a total converted, you know, entryway and we're all trying to like figure out like how to make this work. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit in reverse. Carolyn, I'm going to start with your, um, with the spaces that you submitted because I think it's really great to have these visuals in mind before we get into the product. So again, I have two up here. Um, and I was just wanted to know, Caroline, first of all, it's hard to believe that these are like kind of uh, working spaces, but I think this kind of embodies their whole idea here that like they can be beautiful. They don't, they're, they're, they're functional and beautiful. So Caroline, walk me through these spaces um, and, and, and tell us where, where they are. Um, okay, so the, the, thank you for having me here. And also you guys, it was so interesting listening to what you've been up to and your work's amazing. So thank you for sharing all that with us. Um, the space on the left is actually uh, my husband and I, our former apartment in New York. And that was his little office, but it also had to be a guest bedroom and it had to be a sort of like a TV sitting room. And it was really small and it was off the living room. So we put pocket doors to open this little bedroom off the living room. And he used that teeny little desk, but he, you know, he has since upgraded to a bigger desk. But the point of this room is that I still decorated it like it was any other beautiful sitting room in a house. I just made sure to conceal a lot of storage. So when we put in, um, we put in through uh, central AC and then I, I use that space under the windows for, um, there's some concealed storage, a printer, there's books and stuff that he wanted sort of out of the way. And um, 
he has a ton of built-in bookshelves in another area of the space. And then the sofa pulls out to a bed. And the space on the right was for a client who um, designed this as a sitting room home office, but now is using it much more. But there's in the storage cubes, um, in those, uh, in the coffee tables that you see the little ottomans, those actually are file holders. So, and they have a tray inside. Um, we designed those. And again, the sofa pulls out. There's lots of concealed storage. The printer was a certain size. Um, we took all of those things sort of into account, but they still wanted these rooms to be beautiful. One, the room on the right is, um, it sort of is part of an entryway into a master bedroom. So, it's off of the hallway that enters into the bedroom suite. So it's, it has glass doors on one side and, and exits to the pool on the other. And so it's really, it needed to be presentable. Yeah, no, it's what's so interesting. And I'm glad that you talked about the versatility of these spaces, because I think we can all agree that while, you know, everyone's working space is, it ha is totally different. You know, it's not like a bedroom is a bedroom. You know, these working spaces are super versatile. And so, I think, you know, when we go into your product, we can, you know, keep that in mind that like everyone's space is, it has to do different things. And, but at the same time, they still can be really beautiful and very functional. Um, the fact that these rooms can also double as other, um, you know, uh, you know, sitting rooms or places to entertain. So that I wanted to start with these first, but I think it can kind of get the juices flowing for people to just kind of see how, um, you know, their workspaces can be, can be really beautiful no matter how small or how big, or, you know, if there's, you know, kids doing virtual learning in one corner and someone's working in the next. Um, so thank you for sharing these spaces. They're, they're so, so beautiful. Um, so I was just curious before, you know, we jumped in, you know, what kind of things are your clients asking for? I'm sure they're questions that we all, are, you know, have, but, you know, just, just curious over the past year, I guess, or, you know, nine months or so, you know, what have you been, been getting from your clients in this, in this, you know, pandemic work from home lifestyle that we're all in. Well, it's it's interesting. I think um, some clients we've had to sort of help them select some new pieces, but projects that are more in the planning phase, people are. It's it's not. I think it's more of a permanent reaction. This idea that if you have kid, if you have a bunch of children, they each need their independent workspace um, so they can be on Zoom and the parents can be on Zoom and not have distractions. So I think more so, um, you know, making sure there's a, a dedicated workspace in a child's room. Whereas before I felt like everything happened in the playroom. So now making sure that these kids have desks and a way to organize their school materials that's not, that is attractive. And also times like people, you know, the dining room is one of the most unused room of a house so I think that's a great place where you can sort of set up, spread out, and then the storage furniture that you incorporate into that space can sort of do double duty and, and hide stuff when needed. Um, a lot of it's just organ good organization. Um, as you can see here, like I, this was a gym and now it's becoming my home office and I have built-ins coming, but in the meantime, I just needed everything up. So you, you know, and it, and it looks okay, but like a lot of decorative boxes, places, um, you know, I'm a pile person. So I love to use decorative baskets because it makes me look more organized than I am. But, you know, also at the end of the day, all of this kid's stuff goes, one as a red basket, one as a blue basket. So it goes in the basket and then, you know, it, you can put it on a shelf and make it go away and then have your dinner. So I, I think that, um, you know, people, this is a bar on the left, but I could easily see it sort of serving a purpose if you had a pretty desk or a writing table floating somewhere in the room and then you could use this for storage if you just needed a few things out of the way. Um, and then the one on the right, what I love about Noir though, is like they, they can get you stuff really quickly. So um, when you shop from them, they tell you if they have it in stock on the website. So I, in a pinch, I, I use them a lot. And um, recently I've been looking to them for desks and, um, you know, for more natural looking furniture like this, pretty finishes and woods. Uh, and then obviously these are two very different style pieces, but I was trying to find a range 
Yeah, no, I, I love these pieces and I, and they also have different sizes. I mean, and, and they, some, you know, the one on the left, they has the hidden doors. Um, and then someone on the right who wants to like show off, you know, their, the things that make them happy. Cause at the end of the day, if we're stuck and, you know, working at home, the kind of the perk of it is that we're surrounded by these like furnishings and things that, that, that make us so happy. Um, I put, I, I went with this slide first because I know in you, you said that, you know, storage, creative storage solutions is like number one, like we're not going to work effectively if we feel unorganized and I feel seen because I'm also a pile person. I didn't know that we had a name, but I am totally a pile person that I, I, I shove them in like, I'm like tote bags and I'm like, okay, deal with this like later, but I need to become a, a box person or a basket person. Um, but you know, go, these pieces I thought what struck me, like the one on the left is is um, is marketed as like a bar cabinet, but it's mm -hmm. like, you can make it whatever you want. You know, I mean, unless you're someone who likes to keep some wine nearby in your office, I'm, you know, I like I like that kind of a, a person. But what I thought was, was, was kind of comforting almost about, you know, a purchase like this is that like, who doesn't need storage? Like working from home or not, like this could come in handy in other rooms of the house, right? Yeah, so I sort of imagine placing the bar on the one to the right, because I think it's nice to have the bar out sometimes. Oh, yeah, the exposed bar. But I mean, I, I, what I liked about the one on the left is I have like all these papers and little things that I always kind of want to just get out of the way or maybe tape up somewhere so I don't forget. And I like that it has doors that you can sort of put stuff on the inside. And then it has it has nice compartments inside and drawers and things. So for stationary, you know, all that stuff, maybe you want it in your living room, like the nice stationery, the gift wrap, the whatever it is, the mm -hmm. gift tags and things like that. So um, I love using pieces for things that are not their expected use sometimes. Yeah. And that's, again, like this is where you, and, you know, all of your, um, you know, design experience comes in handy to use these, you know, pieces for whatever, for whatever your client, you know, you know needs. Um, all right. Let's see what's on the next slide. Um, going into organization are these baskets and, and, and these pretty accessories. Um, Caroline, why, why the pretty pieces and not, you know, just, uh, you know, file cabinets or, or, you know, folders and the, those sort of like staples kind of uh, shopping pieces. Well, I do, I, I definitely have like my standard staples things. I think as <laughs> designers too, we all use the envelopes. We all, you know, they, there's things we can't get away from, but I, I like to hide all those things um, at the end of the day. So I think having a nice desk set is, it's, you know, it's a nice gift for a client to be honest after they move into their home, but it's something you normally wouldn't buy for yourself, but when you use it, you feel really good, right? Like it, it's like, owning a beautiful journal or something that wow. makes you treasure it. And I think that having a really nice desk set where all your stuff is organized gives you just a, it's a prettier way to start the day. And the boxes are just critical because I always have, I'm sure a bunch of business cards like everyone else yeah. change or whatever, things I don't want to lose, but don't have time to go through. So I always have a couple of these little boxes, one next to my bed and one on my desk. And freeze up the desk drawer, which needs to, you know, be, you know, serving a totally other, other purpose. Now, I like this. I think this is where people can actually have a lot of fun in their, in their office, like decorate it, put the things that you love or, you know, shop your house, the you know, the, the pieces that you bought on vacation are pieces that are so meaningful to you and, and, and you know, include those in your space um, to really make it feel, you know, and like, I have very random things on my desk. Like I don't, someone gave me this tape measure and it's a shell. Oh, but I use it, you know, so it's just little, you can, you can find little things around your house that you maybe wouldn't think of throwing on your desk and they make you happy. And I think creating a nice work environment is distracting from, you know, sometimes the stress of the everyday. Totally, totally. Um, on this next slide, you know, we just have some beautiful occasional furniture and Caroline, you struck me as someone who, you know, would shop, you know, or I think that people, when I think they're, you know, taking over a workspace in their home that they need to go get um, official, you know, office grade desks or, you know, big bulky office chairs. And, you know, what's the beauty and shopping for, you know, furniture pieces outside of, you know, like office furniture, you know, like, I think what I don't miss about the office right now is like the sterile light and like the really like, you know, you know, sterile surfaces, like we can warm it up and like really 
choose to surround ourselves with beautiful with beautiful pieces. I think, and I think this is actually moving. I'm I'm doing one um, workspace, a commercial office, and and um, I've noticed that they are stout now that they've been the plans changed a bit now that they're working from home. They're still moving forward, but they want the office to feel more like home a bit. So. It's an interesting thing. I think it's always nice to have a comfortable chair or place to sit. It's good to move around when you're working and change locations and um, take breaks. But also I think um, because you have these laptops now you don't really need enormous writing desks. So you can use a vanity, you can use, um, this is a cute little petite desk with not so much storage, but if you have pieces behind you, like the ones we just showed, mm -hmm. you don't, you can have a more open desk floating in a space or I think lighting and lamps, beautiful lamps are really important at different times of day, you know, for your eyes to, to adjust. Right, right. I love what you said about moving around because, you know, these chairs are so beautiful. And I don't think we were suggesting that you would sit in these, you know, at your desk all day, but like even in the earlier image, you know, the interiors images that you showed us, you know, your old apartment and that client down in Florida, like there were other pieces of furniture in the space that were not, you know, you know, a working desk or a working chair. It's like a place to sit and read a memo or, you know, maybe like make your to-do list, you know, you know, moving and it almost feels like a nice little like vacation from your desk if you can just go plop down into like a beautiful, a beautiful seat. And what I liked about this Bernhardt uh, piece, it swivels and also it can kind of get tucked in a corner make a little, little reading nook. Um, but oh, I, I liked your point though, that you can get like a slim little desk if you have like one of those awesome, you know, storage pieces doing all like the hard work and you can just kind of plop down at the desk and, 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 and answer some emails and whatnot. So, yeah, and I think comfort is key and feeling clean and pretty and, you know, all those things that you want for your bedroom, your living room, you, you know, the places that you, you spend the most time in, so. Totally. Yeah. No, I think that's a big takeaway that I would want everyone watching to, to, to take with them, you know, that this workspace should reflect you and it's in your home and you shouldn't sacrifice, um, you know, this, your style, you know, just because it's a, it's a place that you're supposed to get, to get work done. I'm curious if any of you, Raymond or Shannon or Cheryl, like if your clients are asking for some home office help and it's interesting, Caroline, that you were saying that those in the design planning process, that's where it's really, uh, you're getting, you know, the, you know, the ask for help to kind of build it in from the ground up. But I'm curious if anyone has a client or a friend or someone that you're helping with, you know, an existing home, you know, they're not knocking down walls, but like what, what kind of things are they asking for just to like get them, get them by? I know we're definitely in all the kids rooms these days, like we're doing a house on Miami beach right now. And the two bedrooms for the kids, they're requesting for us to build them a space where they could do homework and be able to do Zoom calls or whatever Skype calls that they, they need. So we are definitely incorporating that more into our designs for in the kids' rooms. I know uh, yesterday we, we met with a client um, from New York and you know the guest room, we're even building a full built-in that's part of the back paneling. It's gonna float into a desk space. So we are incorporating desk spaces into the, you know the new designs. Right. For sure, it's definitely being asked from us. Yeah, and it's just becoming the new norm. So this is definitely a spot on trend. I mean, we have another client, he's an OBGYN and he likes to, now he's working from home more often than not. He's doing paperwork and stuff. Right, yeah. paperwork. And uh, he's, again, a little bit more modern of an approach for this client and he's going fully built in, customized. Mm -hmm. So it's wall to wall, floor to ceiling, built ins. Um, with he has a, like a lot of medical books and all that stuff. So he's right. got all these, you know, places where he can store all of right. his stuff and Obviously his wife is like- But it's also his, at the same time, it doubles as his hangout room. So oh yeah, he has true. the huge large screen TV with the audio and visual surround sound. Yeah. And a custom chase where his and his kid, him and his kids can lay down and hang out. Yep. Yeah, that's nice to hear that they're like, these are hardworking rooms at the end of the day. And who knows if they'll yeah. be in like two years. Like it could be something, you know, totally new. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that every inch of our home is never going to be underappreciated, you know, ever again. I mean, here Carolina is sitting in a converted uh, garage gym or, or, and, and now it's this beautiful office space. Um, it's been interesting to also hear um, clients request a particular focus on the aesthetics in their space 
because of this virtual world we've all been <laughs> so um i've had a couple of um past clients reach out and say hey help you know i'm on zoom and my background is not living up to the expectations yeah. uh, you know in my in my professional world which i think is so that's so valid right we care about how things look and always have but now people who were maybe more concerned about function are now like uh people are seeing my space and i need it to look presentable Right. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Carol, that's something that you should host on like your Instagram or something. Yeah. Because you should see the mess that's around my desk right now. <laughs> These are just like move the desk, threw things on the floor, like propped up flowers on my desk, <laughs> books. Like it's just, there could be a business plan in there, I think. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to go see if we have any questions for you guys I'm looking into our chat. I actually got a chat from or a text from a coworker who's watching and this is doesn't really have anything to do with your trends, but she was curious if you guys could take one piece of furniture or object or piece of art with you, if the house is burning, like what are you grabbing with you and why? Hmm. I know the hard hitting questions. <laughs> anyone who anyone have anything that jumps out that I them? actually I I've said this on social media before. Um, I have two Dunes and Duchess candelabras. Um, they're actually what I posted this morning. You can see a little bit of them. I, they're not functional, but they are so beautiful. I also love Stacey and Michael, but um, they're so pretty and they represent to me this notion of home being special and a place that you open up to others and make them feel welcome and so it's it's i only pull them out for entertaining mostly or a special dinner but those candelabras are probably what i would grab oh pretty functional too i mean like okay who doesn't like read by candlelight that's lovely <laughs> um i'm actually blessed enough that i just purged my entire life and i sold my house during covid so and i'm in the process of closing on a new home so i'm starting from scratch um, I don't have any furniture. I don't have anything. And I'm actually getting inspired by all of you guys um, and all these new design elements and new styles that are coming and this layering concept. And I'm definitely going to be selecting new pieces for my new home. So I'm kind of at a fresh start. Um, I think I would definitely just make sure that... Um, yeah, my cat. And my, <laughs> <laughs> and my, I guess my husband. I have to bring those people. Like, <laughs> <Mike. laughs> um, and you, you have some really cool pieces when you travel. So, yeah, I'm in a similar situation. Um, I just bought a house during COVID, me and my wife, right? And um, we've uh, been fortunate enough to travel to uh, South Africa with Cheryl. I think that's where you should be doing work because yes. your style is like, hit on. All it's the, on my list. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> um, so we're definitely going to be infusing some stuff from Dominican Republic, South Africa, mm -hmm. um, Greece. So nothing that I would hold on. So all those things are very sentimental, even though they haven't been installed yet, because we're still <laughs> waiting for permitting. Um, so yeah, so well, I'll, I'll we'll reconvene and I'll let you know. Yes. Super cool. Yeah. Miss Carolyn? Uh, that's a really hard one. I um I had this unusual situation where I had this grandmother who um, was a voracious collector and would just send me the coolest things. So I have these special little things from her that I probably would like throw into a bag and and with my family run out the door and the two dogs. But you know, there's like a few things from her that are little sculptures. Um, you know, bookshelf type of things that just have so much meaning to me. She, she got me a Pedro Friedenberg little butterfly chair. I don't, I think it's right here. Like this type of stuff. I would grab this type of stuff from her. Oh, how special. You know, it's just sweet. Those are the things I would grab that remind me of people I love. Yeah, totally irreplaceable. Yeah. Well, Caroline, luckily, since you have all these handy storage things around in your home office, you can just throw them in the box or throw them in the basket. And I would grab my big tote that has my pile in it. There you go. 
You're taking your pile with you. Yeah. I have to take the pile too. I have to take the pile. Yeah. Work's got to get done. Well, those are really great answers. Thanks guys. Well, believe it or not, we've been on this for an hour. Um, this flew by, you guys have had, you know, provided us such amazing insight. And I know that everyone watching, whether they're attending market in person or if they're going to do it virtually, that, you know, they are going to be on the hunt for some of these great products that you all highlighted and also just keeping these trends and, um, you know, ideas in mind while, while they're, while they're shopping. So, um, thank you guys for, for giving such great, um, insight into the design world, which you guys are such, you know, top dogs in. So I just want to let everyone know that this webinar has been recorded and you can visit atlantamarket.com slash Atlanta remote to watch it anytime on demand. Uh, you'll also receive an email from zoom with a link to the recording. So you can access it that way. Also, um, I just want to say a big thank you for, for all of you viewers and panelists out there who are with us today. Um, and a huge thanks to my panelists, Cheryl, Caroline, Raymond, and Shannon, and the America's Mart team. Uh, I wish you all a happy market, happy shopping, and um, a wonderfully inspiring year ahead. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. thank you guys. Thank you guys soon, hopefully. Yes. we Will do. Thank you guys. Hope you guys have a great 2021, all of you. Yes. Yes. Good juju to everyone. Right. Yes, That's for right. Sure. Yep. Fresh start. Awesome. All right. Thank you.